So let's look a little deeper as to what the compiler is generating when it creates a class for our delegate type. Um, here I've I've uh, instantiated one. I just said point it to main, but that doesn't really matter. I just want to look at the type here that's created. So let's go over here and get the reflector up. And when I look at my assembly, here's my me delegate declaration. Notice I have this switched over to IL just so we can kind of get the low of the low. But here's the class that it was generated. Um, it's class, me delegate, the name, same name as what we call their delegate over here. Uh, it inherits multicast delegate, which is a built-in type. If we look at multicast delegate, it further inherits delegate. And we'll get into a little bit more of that later. But for now, just look at the, the methods that were created. First, there's a constructor. It takes an object and a method. And I'll talk about that a little later. Now, we have a begin invoke and end invoke, which uh, handles some threading stuff. And then here's the invoke I showed in the previous video. The invoke has the same signature as our delegate. Uh, our delegate returns void. This returns void and takes no arguments. Just for fun, we can make this thing take an int uh, value. And let's uh, delete this so that we can still compile. Uh, bring up the reflector again. And we see we delegate and evoke the signature has changed. The signature takes an int now and its value, the same name as what I used here. Uh, okay, anyway, let's let's talk a little bit about the object and the method. In fact, you notice the method is an int. Um, depending on how low you want to go beyond, uh, beyond .NET, .NET and also Java hide away a lot of details, but a method is pretty much an address where execution needs to start. So when you call a method, wherever the execution, the the, the pointer, if you notice when we uh, debug in Visual Studio we get this yellow thing. Basically it's just sitting on an address. There's an actual physical address in RAM associated with this location. So when we do something like if I put void static void foo here, when I call foo here, well foo is really just an address saying jump to that location and start execution. And then when it hits the closing curly on foo, then it jumps back to wherever we left off. And there's some a lot of magic going on under there. The stack's responsible for it and a whole lot of other stuff I'm not going to get into right now. But but basically um, this native int method, is it, basically we're just storing the address of where we need to start execution. So when we invoke the delegate, it just jumps to this location. Now object is the object in which to invoke the method upon. Now if you notice here, um, let's just go back and say me delegate d gets foo. Well, foo is a static method, meaning that there's no object associated with it. I guess to get it compiled I have to put an int here. But it's, it's static. There's no object associated with it. Now if I did another void goo uh, int blah. Okay. Well now this is a non-static method or sometimes known as an instance method. So in order to invoke goo, I, I just can't call goo out here in main. Oh Google class. I wonder where that came from. Um, I just can't call goo. I have to have an instance. So I can say new main class and new up an instance and then call goo. I could do that. Or I could store my instance in a main class and gets new main class. And then I could say uh, m dot uh, goo. Okay, that's fine. That's an instance method. But, oh, that was the problem. Oh, it wants an argument. Okay. So let me do a d gets m dot goo. <laughs> All right, now look at that. Look at that. Look what I'm doing. Okay. Now, instead of saying D gets foo, the static method, I have to say M, the object to invoke it upon, dot goo. All right. So if I bring the reflector back up, that object here will be be the M in this case, where I I say M. It'll be the same object which M is referencing, which is this main class that's out on the heap. So, so that's why we have the object and the method. There's really two things you need when you in, invoke a method: is the object to invoke it on, uh, and the address of the method. But if the method's static, there is no object. Okay. So let me um, let me just show you. We can actually look at this stuff. I'm going to console right line m dot, uh, not m d. D is our delegate dot. And see, I have the begin invoke, and there's a bunch of other stuff here that we inherit. But we have method. Okay, which is a method info. You can go read the reflection or watch the reflection videos if you want to know more about that. But basically, there's the method. 
And then I can say uh, d dot target, which is the object to invoke it on. All right, and I'm actually gonna gonna do this. Let's let's print out the method in the target when I assign it to a static method foo. And I'm also gonna do it after I um, assign it to an instance method goo here. So let me just run this. Let me see. Okay. Here's here's the method info the reflection again going on, but basically it's saying, hey, uh, the method is this void foo that takes an int, and then notice there's nothing printed here on the second right line because target was null. It's, there's nothing. There's no object. Okay, but now we have a void goo for this uh, for this method because that's the method we're referencing. Then we also have a main class, and this is the default to string that we get for a main class, but basically or for any class that we we create if we don't override two string. Um, so this is the instance. Anyway, so so if the two the two things to keep in your head to keep keep straight a me a delegate keeps track of two things: the method and the instance to invoke that upon. That's that's a key key concept you need to drill into your head.